Hi everyone. In the previous part of chemotherapy, we discussed about the general features of chemotherapeutic agents or drugs. In this part, we are going to discuss about mechanism of action of antimicrobial drugs or antimicrobial agents. So antibiotics through their selective toxicity inhibit the growth of target organism inside the host into which it has been administered. However, the mechanism of action of antibiotics of each antimicrobial drug differs. That means they are not going to have the common. One antibiotic is going to have more effective when compared to the other. So antimicrobial drugs which inhibit the growth of pathogens by different mechanisms and these are certain mechanisms by which the antibiotics or the therapeutic drugs are going to inhibit the pathogens like number one inhibition of bacterial cell wall synthesis disruption of cell membrane inhibition of protein synthesis inhibition of nucleic acid synthesis antagonism of metabolic pathways that is blocking of metabolic pathways inhibition in respiration alteration in the membrane function so here in the picture you can see this inhibition of cell wall synthesis can be occurred by certain antibiotics like penicillin bacitracin and the disruption of the cell membrane that is plasma membrane can occur by polymixin compounds like b and e and then inhibition of protein synthesis that means these antibiotics will not allow the bacteria to do its protein synthesis which is essential for its growth and all the things and then Inhibition of nucleic acids, the DNA replication, RNAs, or everything is going to be hard by certain uh, antibiotics. And the action of anti-metabolites, that is antagonism of metabolic pathways like sulfonamides and trimethoprodin. So these all things we will discuss individually one by one in detail now. So let's move to the first one, inhibition of bacterial cell wall synthesis. So here is a clear picture of uh, the different mechanism by which the different antibiotics are going to kill the microbial pathogen so especially bacterial pathogen so the cell wall synthesis is going to be blocked or stopped by all these antibiotics then the folic acid metabolism which is essential for the dna metabolism all the things is going to be blocked by these drugs or antibiotics then here is the DNA gyrase is going to be blocked by these type of antibiotics. Then RNA elongation. Then you can see the protein synthesis which is uh, going to be stopped by 50 years. And some are going to be involved in stopping the 30 years. And the cytoplasmic membrane structure or plasma membrane is by polymyxin and daptomycin. So this is the overall view of the different mechanisms by which these antibiotics are chemotherapeutic drugs are inhibiting the growth of microorganisms. So first of all, the inhibition of bacterial cell wall synthesis. So penicillins are the best examples of uh, discussing under this one. So which inhibit the synthesis of cell wall mainly during the growing bacteria that are synthesizing new peptidoglycan. So you know the bacterial structure very clearly. So here you can see this uh, is going to be the peptidoglycan layer and here in the gram negative you are having very thin peptidoglycan layer. Now this penicillin is going to uh, remove this one. That means it is going to break the linkages of this penicillin uh, peptidoglycan bond that is present between them. So this whole thing we will discuss in detail in the mode of action of penicillin topic okay in another video. So here just remember that this penicillin is going to inhibit the synthesis of this peptidoglycan layer especially in the growing bacteria. So it is going to inhibit the transpeptidation enzymes which are responsible for cross-linking of uh, this peptidoglycan layer. And not only that, this penicillin also activates the cell wall lytic enzymes. That means the one which is going to break the cell wall. So those are going to be called as cell wall lytic enzymes. So along with the penicillin, 
We are also having the other antibiotics that we have discussed here is Bacitracin, Vancomycin, Cycloserin, Cephalosporins, Monobactam and Carbapenin. So these are all going to be considered as a, uh, antibiotics which are involved in inhibiting the cell wall synthesis. Okay, then moving to the second one, disruption of cell membrane that is plasma membrane. A cell wall with a damaged membrane dies from a disruption in the metabolism or lysis. So these drugs have specificity for a particular microbial group based on the differences in the types of uh, lipids in their cell membrane. So that means actually we know that the cell membrane is uh, made up of phospholipid bilayer and that composition is going to differ with different types of microbes. So there is the target where we are synthesizing these drugs and making them to be uh, targeting the microorganisms. So polymyxin B, so here you can see, is going to bind to the plasma membrane and disturbs its structure and the properties of uh, permeability especially this polymyxin B is going to be effective in gram negative bacteria. So we are going to have uh, only two types of polymyxins. One is a polymyxin B and polymyxin E which have been developed commercially. Okay, So this is how a polymyxin compounds or antibiotics are disrupting the cell membrane of the microorganisms. Then moving to the third one, inhibition of protein synthesis. Some antibiotics inhibit the protein synthesis of uh, pathogenic microorganisms and act differently. For example, take streptomycin. This streptomycin binds to the 30th subunit of the bacterial ribosome and cause misreading of mRNA. That means it will divert the mRNA reading and therefore inhibits the protein synthesis at the final stage. In the same manner, if you take the tetracycline, is going to block the attachment of the tRNA on the A acceptor. That means we are going to have the sites in the ribosome subunit that is AP sites, isn't it? So this is going to block the attachment of this tRNA molecule at the A acceptor site and stops further synthesis, that is further synthesis of proteins. In the same manner, if we consider the chloramphenicol and erythromycin, which will bind to the 50th subunit, so this larger subunit, 50th subunit and inhibit the peptide chain formation. So this will be inhibited and further elongation respectively by inhibiting the peptidyl transferase. So this is how these all chloramphenicol, erythromycin, tetracycline and streptomycin, they are going to uh, affect the protein sensors at different stages and they are not allowing the bacteria to do its normal protein synthesis and obviously the, uh, it is going to inhibit its protein synthesis which will lead to the death of the organism. Okay. Next moving to the inhibition of nucleic acid synthesis. So as I told you some antimicrobial drugs also inhibit the nucleic acid synthesis. What are nucleic acids? DNA and RNA. So here are examples of this one quinolins. So these are the examples of uh, quinolins that is ciprofloxacin, novobiosin and uh, nalidix acid. Okay, then quinolins and novobiosins are going to inhibit the DNA gyrase. What is this DNA gyrase? So this DNA gyrase is an enzyme, a class of topoisomerase, which is an essential enzyme that catalyzes the ATP dependent negative supercoiling of double-stranded DNA. So we know that in the bacteria it is going to be of circular manner. So it will uh, catalyze the ATP dependent negative supercoilings of double-stranded DNA. Not only that, it is also involved in control of topological transitions of DNA, bacterial DNA. Okay, so here it is going to inhibit the DNA gyrase and interfere with DNA replication then transcription and repair. So if the DNA want to repair also, these quinols and novobiosin do not allow it to do its repair mechanism. Then moving to the uh, another example of this one is ciprofloxacin, so which inhibits the DNA gyrase, widely used in the treatment of respiratory and urinary tract infection. Then actinomycin, which is inhibiting the RNA elongation, is the best example. 
then rifampamin and streptovaricins which are going to inhibit the dna dependent rna polymerase so this rifampin is widely used in the treatment of leprosy and tuberculosis this is so here is a ciprofloxacin structure equinoline compound and here is a pharmaceutical form of this rifampin antibiotic so now moving to the next one antagonism of uh, metabolic pathways so there are some of the antibiotics that block the functioning of metabolic pathways through competitive inhibition of enzymes so here are going to be of some of uh, uh, one which are going to inhibit this one so let's see sulfonamides and trimethoprim block enzymes required for tetrahydrofoliate synthesis needed for dna and rna synthesis so here you can see the sulfonamides so these one or actually inhibit the synthesis of folic acid metabolism as it competes with the para amino benzoic acid for the active site of an enzyme involved in the folic uh, acid synthesis so this is a competitive inhibitor which one the sulfonamide is a competitive inhibitor of this paba in the same manner if you are going to take the trimethoprim so binds to tetrahydrofoliate that is this one thf and what happens if it is going to binds to that one by inhibiting the synthesis of dihydrofolate synthesis then dapsone is another antibiotic which interferes with the folic acid metabolism even isonazide disrupts pyridoxal or nad metabolism okay and functioning which inhibits the synthesis of mycolic acid so this is how the metabolic pathways are going to be altered that means they are going to have the same structure but their function is totally different so that's how it is going to be of antagonism so it is not allowing it is going to compete with it and replacing it and which is going to disrupt the functioning of a normal bacterial cell so the best example is the folic acid metabolism so along with this we are also having two more uh, uh, mechanisms which are going to be of uh, uh, antimicrobial agents the one is a alteration in what we call is a membrane function and another one is the inhibition in respiration antimycins are going to inhibit the growth of some fungi okay so here uh, what is going to happen this group of antibiotics inhibit the oxidation of succinate so we know that respiration tca cycle all those things so in which these antibiotics are inhibiting the oxidation of succinate and valinomycin is active against gram positive bacteria and inhibits the oxidative phosphorylation where it is going to derive its energy which is going to be not done in the presence of this one in the same manner gramicidins are inhibitors of phosphorylation so all kinds of atp synthesis is going to inhibited by these antibiotics so that's how there are uh, these drugs which are going to inhibit the respiratory metabolism so where it is going to die so these are all the different types of mechanisms of uh, antimicrobial agents by which our drugs are going to kill these microorganisms so what are those all the inhibition of bacterial cell wall synthesis disruption of cell membrane inhibition of protein synthesis then inhibition of nucleic acid synthesis antagonism or blocking of metabolic pathways inhibition in respiration alteration in the membrane functions okay so this is all the things that we have discussed so here just i want to mention the terminology of the chemotherapy so where uh, i just uh, want to give it in the first part but i missed it so here uh, is the different types of the terms that we use in the chemotherapy have a glance of it that what we have discussed is narrow spectrum broad spectrum synthetic semi synthetic antibiotics anti micro prophylaxis chemotherapeutic okay so you can have a glance of it and uh, you can learn it so that's all about the mechanism of action of antimicrobial agents in the next part we are going to discuss about the mode of action of sulfonamides and the penicillins in the consecutive videos thank you